I realize now there is a sound reason I got lying, because there's no way to make these discoveries and to have this level of understanding of what you go through, what all the Lyme victims go through, what I went through, without having first-hand knowledge. And the way to have first-hand knowledge is to contract the miserable disease. That said, at first it was, oh, oh my God, I've got this. It could have been prevented. So many uh, other possibilities. Should have been taking, for example, the wild oregano regularly. I was not at that time, was busy in the wilderness. But I retract all that mentally because it needed to happen. It was an important uh, consequence for all of us that a physician of my nature who has written about infectious diseases, who has reversed countless uh, cases of chronic infection and acute infection through natural medicine, by going through this, by contracting the condition, we can talk and get some strong, strong, strong uh, information out there that can help the, the teeming masses who have uh, suffered this very dire illness, which can be fatal and uh, at the minimum causes destruction of people's health so that they have to live and suffer with a chronic illness. What I've discovered most recently uh, after a two and a half year basically battle with Lyme disease is that there are some components that have not been addressed that may account for the vulnerability to Lyme and may even account for the cause. Now think about this ladies and gentlemen. Where is Lyme most prevalent? Where is it epidemic? Where is the pandemic? And you see that this is the case in Europe, in North, Northern Europe, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere of that area, and in parts of Russia and Eastern Europe, in the North, less prevalent in the Southern Hemisphere uh, of Eurasia, and in Africa, less prevalent, and also in the United States, in North America, more prevalent in the North a degree in Canada and certainly to a large degree in the upstate uh, seaboard of the northeast, heavy concentration of Lyme, and in the upper northern Midwest, Michigan, epidemic, Wisconsin, pandemic, Minnesota, and then in the upper northwest, but less prevalent as you go down into the south. Uh, what is the connection there? Part of it is certainly environmental. Certainly, Plum Island, where the Lyme disease cure states, basically, uh, amongst other publications, uh, Area 257 by Carroll, for example, by Harper, Collins, uh, and many posters on the internet, that the source of Lyme is Plum Island, which is about 10 miles as the wind blows south of Old Lyme and Lyme, Connecticut, so the outbreak occurring in that area near a bioweapons research facility disguised as a military lab and disguised as a veterinary lab there in the later years of the, of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. But no doubt Plum Island uh, is a key factor because tick research was being uh, applied where the ticks were used as vectors and injected with a variety of bacteria and other pathogens, then released into the environment for testing to see if a bioweapon could be created using, say, ticks and mosquitoes to drop on so-called the bad guys. Turns out that the bad elements, the bad characters are within uh, because the there are two epidemics that were sparked by the research, it appears, from Plum Island. One is West Nile, which occurred, or how does a West, West African viral disease transmitted by mosquitoes that's never in the Northern Hemisphere, that's never in North America, suddenly uh, break out a few miles from Plum Island, whereas in 1975, according to the USDA documents, amongst others, uh, that same facility was doing tick vector research by injecting the ticks, inoculating them with 
germs that were manipulated by researchers at the facility and doing that research in 1975 and then the, the gross outbreak occurs 10 miles south as the wind blows where pocket outbreaks occurred in families of, of several children or a child that developed incredibly enough Lyme arthritis where there was juvenile like arthritis breaking out in single joints amongst other symptoms like fatigue um, and uh, then down the road chronic illnesses for these children never occurring in civilization uh, before where, where groups of children in the same household would develop rheumatoid like arthritis of single weight bearing joints. So, but that doesn't totally account for the current epidemiology of it being primarily a northern hemisphere condition. Uh, so, could there be, and this of course is the primarily the deer tick, but now the latest research from the DNR in Wisconsin, for instance, is that one of four wood ticks has the Lyme bacteria, which is of course a spiral keep known as Borrelia burgdorferi, and that particular spiral keep is a corkscrew pathogen very similar to syphilis, almost a weaponized syphilis you could call it. Back to the premise, why the heavy concentration in the north, why the high risk of contracting it in the woods and scrub of Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, of course, as we move east and the entire um, upper northeastern seaboard from upstate New York, Maine, all the way down into North Carolina. Could it be that there is another factor that's never been uh, previously discussed? And that's the premise of this talk, never before published, which is that it's likely that we can prove that deficiencies of certain nutrients increase the vulnerability of the Lyme disease quite dramatically, particularly in reference to the attack by the spirochete, coming to it now I know, on the joints. And those joints are dependent on uh, a high density of certain, uh, a goodly intake of certain nutrients to, to create a high density uh, of calcium and phosphorus and mineral matter, connective tissue matter, to keep the joints and the bones strong. You guessed it, vitamins A, D, and K, the fat-soluble vitamins. But they play a role in uh, the incidence of Lyme, therefore a lack of them. And now let's start with vitamin D. We said that the highest incidence is in the areas of the far north or the uh, northern hemisphere where the sun uh, light is not as penetrating, not as powerful, not as uh, you know, received by the human body as it would be in the south. Could it be the deficiency of vitamin D leading to a weakness or vulnerability in those joints and bones be a factor? And I'm here to tell you that it is. If those bones are porous, that's a perfect environment for the Lyme spiral keep because Lyme, this bacteria, preferentially hides and attacks the joints and the bones. In fact, it has the capacity with its corkscrew uh, structure where it has uh, an attaching module or component on its tail where it attaches to human tissue and it has a spike-like uh, head that is used to bore into any kind of a tissue, brain tissue, spinal cord, uh, liver, spleen, other organs, and particularly white blood cells, red cells, particularly bone and joint for this discussion. If those bones and joints are strong and resilient, resistant, then are the likelihood of contracting Lyme and developing the chronic joint sequelae are minimized, perhaps neutralized. Now personal experience. What I discovered was in the cascade of symptoms I had with Lyme that without question the use of the wild oregano was invaluable. But I continued to have some residual 
uh, issues in the elbows and particularly in the knee. In that knee, what I discovered was that if I could take the wild oregano in a crude form, a crude unprocessed form with the, with the Roos Coriorea, and this is a product that's on the market, also has garlic and onion on in it, I noticed a dramatic improvement in the knee and in the swelling and the pain and the agony. Turns out that that kind of wild oregano, unprocessed material, is very high in vitamin K as far as food, food source, higher than, or just as high as liver. Uh, then I noticed that in desperation to get this knee, Lyme knee, corrected, that perhaps I should try another source of vitamin A, D, and K, you know, the, the oregano doesn't have D in it, doesn't have any A. So I moved into a raw liver extract from fish liver that I myself created and uh, by using some salt and some other uh, substances. And this is a fish liver from freshwater fish, freshwater cod. Many of, you, many of you may have seen the YouTube video of me on the ice making this discovery and, and wanting to do something with it. Finally, it was turned into a, an edible product. It's the uh, burbot liver, also known by the natives as Mariah. I call it freshwater cod for simplicity. Uh, but, but this raw liver, which is high in A, D, and K, had a dramatic impact on the joints, on the joint uh, flexibility, and, and took a almost inflexible knee uh, where I was using a cane, got rid of the cane, started to be able to flex that knee virtually within minutes of taking this vitamin A, D, and K source. And some of you are very interested in this, you might look at the Health Hunter information on this Omega A, D, K brand new material. Raw. So combination of raw oregano with raw vitamin K and raw uh, freshwater fish liver extract or concentrate, uh, dramatic improvement. Now then, the final proof to me that the issues of bone density or porous bones, weakened bones, weakened cartilage, uh, provide the environment for the attack by the Lyme bacillus was when this new technology of bone activating essential oils that I've been working on when this new technology was made available as drops, sublingual drops, or, or, or actually a rubbing oil that can also be taken internally, there was still some stiffness in that knee and some inability to have a smooth gait, so I took this newest material, which is a combination of rosemary, sage, and oregano oils, wild oils from the spices that are distilled in an olive oil base. And this material is of interest because of the research demonstrating that it is effective at reducing bone loss by stopping the bone resorption or the bone digestion, if you will, by cells known as osteoclasts. So it stops those bone-eating cells, it stops the excessive parathyroid hormone, it then causes the bone laying cells, bone producing, bone rebuilding cells, the osteoblasts to become activated and to be uh, more uh, uh, effective at laying down bone. And this material, according to the science, which you can see on CassIngram.com, you can see several articles there, according to that, the letter of that science, it increases the estrogen levels uh, the, or the, the pro-hormones that are involved in bone deposition while increasing calcium and phosphorus, these oils do, and also the spices of the same, sage, rosemary, and oregano. And this is based on the work by Mulbauer and others. So I took this oil, squirted it in the, some water, because it was, so it's very pungent, I decided just to go ahead and squirt it in the, the 12 ounce bottle of water, three, four droppers full, drank it, and had a dramatic Ladies and gentlemen, dramatic improvement in the flexibility of that uh, leg. This, and you'll see the pictures perhaps on the website. It was all swollen. But the flexibility was dramatically improved. And uh, now I can, uh, you can see from the before and after pictures that it's back to normal. 
There's still some work to do because this knee has been attacked in, with Lyme issues four or five times over the years, particularly this last two and a half years, relapsing into a swelling three times. I'm not going to tolerate that anymore. I now have the secret. Uh, so I'm, what I'm doing is I'm increasing the density of my bones and joints through this bone activating oil internally and I had a lot of success with it by the way topically because of the agonizing pain at night to, so I could sleep better and there's capsules with the rosemary sage and oregano with uh, MCHC which is microcrystalline hydroxyapatite raw bone from New Zealand from grass fed cattle those capsules the wild oregano plus the roost coriaria garlic and onion those capsules and I'm building up the density of my bones as a uh, preventive and as a means of conquering the last vestiges of the Lyme. So in summary, you can see the Lyme disease cure. You can read about the high dose wild oregano oil and other supplements that I took to clear the majority of the symptoms. And now for those of you who suffer with residual chronic Lyme in, in terms of joint uh, consequences, this discovery is likely to help give you major relief and help in the reversal, therefore the Lyme disease cure, I mean business, rid of it permanently. So look into this protocol, I'll summarize it for you. The, the wild oregano plus roost garlic and onion, which goes along with the Swiss research on what foods increase bone, bone density, garlic, onion, are right top in there, along with wild oregano, sage and rosemary. The oils themselves, which there's good research on, including carnosic acid in rosemary, shutting down the bone-eating cells, activating the bone-lying cells, sage uh, and oregano in oil form. Then the raw liver oil, which is hard to get, but you can go to the website and study that. The raw burbot slash freshwater cod uh, material with raw vitamins and uh, you want to add in a few other things, your oil of oregano, your natural vitamin C from Camu Camu, also for good, good for the bones. But that's basically what I discovered, and I hope it helps you in the recovery and reversal of Lyme.